Hello, Patrick here with Urban Carry Holsters, and today we're going to be showing you how to field strip and properly clean the Glock 26 or the Glock 27. The reason I say or is because these firearms are pretty much identical. You can actually interchange most of the parts between the two, except for the slide and the barrel, because they're chambered in different calibers. The 26 is chambered in 9mm, and the 27 is chambered in 40 caliber. Now, these firearms debuted in 1996, and they took the subcompact concealed carry pistol world by storm. For now, though, we're going to turn these over to Chase, who's going to show us how to break them down and clean them. Gaston Glock's famous creation, the Baby Glocks. Then I'm going to show you how to field strip and properly clean your Glock 26 and or your 27. They are essentially the same firearm, just one is in 40 cal and one is in 9 millimeter. Now, of course, just for you viewers, I just want to show that both of these guns are clear of any ammunition. Okay. No ammunition in the mag, none in the gun. And of course, it's going to do the same thing to the 26. No ammo. So, of course, that's always what you want to do first. Okay, we always want to be safe when working on our firearms. And of course, we don't ever want to have any kind of ammunition on our workbench. But I'm basically going to just take the 26 and show you how to take it down. It takes down the same way as the 27. Um, but Mag is empty, chamber's empty. Now, with these guns, and most all Glocks will take down all the same way. Right here are these little nubs, okay? It's a bar, okay? And there's a little uh, place for you to take your finger and push down on the right and left side, all right? And what you're going to do is I just take my thumb and I brace it on the back of the handle, and then I take my fingers and I just move the slide up slightly. Okay, and again, you just have to do it slightly, but then take your thumb and index finger, place it on that bar, move your slide, pull down on that bar, and keep it down, point your gun in a safe direction, and depress your trigger, okay? This will allow for your, hand, for your slide and your uh, frame to come apart. So first thing we're going to do is take out our recoil spring. This, you just take your finger. Okay, put it on the back of that recoil spring, press down, and lift out. It's very simple. Same thing with your barrel. It's very simple to operate. Okay, all you're gonna do is lift up from the ejection port, okay, on, on the top side of the slide, push a little off to the side, and that'll put your barrel at an angle. Then it'll just lift right out. So what we wanna do first is get some uh, cleaner inside this barrel. Um, I always suggest uh, to not use oil when cleaning your gun. Oil attracts more dirt and more of that powder fouling and overall you're going to have to clean your gun a lot more the next time than when you did the first time without the oil. So what I suggest is just getting yourself some good gun cleaner. Okay, Here I use Hoppy's Elite Gun Cleaner. It's I've been using it for quite a while now and it works great it removes uh, and helps uh, break down a lot of carbon and powder fouling and copper and brass anything that's left inside of your gun but it does really well now what what we want to do first is of course get that inside the barrel now of course you can use one of these leads and then just put in one of your cleaning patches okay but an easier way that I found to at least get a coating inside of your barrel. It's just to take one of your cleaning rods, put, you know, an old brush on it, or at least, you know, semi-old brush. I'm going to use this brush to help swab out the barrel uh, eventually in this video. But all you want to do is take one of your cleaning pads and just wrap your brush in it. Okay? This makes it so you can get, you know, good tension on all the rifling inside the barrel. And of course, it'll help clean it out just a little bit. Now as you can see I used uh, just a couple of sprays of this. It's all you're really going to need. And when cleaning your barrel, what you're going to notice is I'm going to go in through the bore side or the back side of the barrel since I can take this barrel out of the firearm. Now the important thing to note is don't try to really go through the muzzle end of your barrel. This is where your crown is. Okay. This is where the end of the, the crown is basically the end of the rifling inside of your barrel. And if it gets nicked or chipped or disrupted in some sort of manner, it's going to affect your accuracy. 
Again, these guns aren't really made to go out to 100 yards by any means, but again, every little bit helps. But if you tend to not take your barrel out and you just need to swab it out, this is why I also show this. There's this little bushing right here, and it's in the shape of a cone, okay? And if you were to go in through the muzzle end of the barrel, this cone sits right on top of that rifling so that the cleaning rod doesn't hit the crown, okay? Now, of course, it's not really necessary since we're going to be going through the back end of the barrel, but that's just something to note. Okay, so we've already put some gun cleaner on this. Just going to go through and coat it a little bit. Alright, I'm going to take that same swab and it still has some cleaner on it. And I'm just going to address the whole bore area, especially the, clean, the feeding ramp, which is right here. Okay, this course if it's all gunked up it's not going to feed your rounds right and of course then it's not going to go into battery and then you're not going to be able to fire your weapon so make sure that you get some of the, your cleaner on here too but now we've done that we're going to move on to the slide okay so what i use for the slide at least to get gun cleaner on it it's just a nylon brush you can get these at any kind of gun store but um, something simple that also works too is just a regular toothbrush. Okay, of course you want to use nylon. You don't want something too abrasive that's going to wear off the finish of your gun, like some kind of wire brush. But again, nylon or a toothbrush works just fine. So I'm going to just put a couple of sprays on this brush, and I'm going to address areas such as the slide rails uh, underneath the bolt face, the bolt face itself. Okay, which is right in here, which is where your firing pin hole is and where your striker uh, comes out. And then also this is where your extractor is. Um, that's important to get because if that gets gunked up, of course, it's going to start pulling off to the side and then your rounds aren't going to eject properly. So right now I'm just getting those slide grooves. Okay, it's a point of friction on the gun. You don't want anything really disrupting that. Then underneath that bolt face and then how I usually clean the bolt face is I turn the slide upside down that way I don't get any of the solution inside the firing pin hole and I just give this a quick little scrub again you just want to get a film of this on these parts of your firearm that way you can start breaking down any of that excess powder another area you could get is just where the barrel meets the slide, okay, in this large hole right up front towards the muzzle of the gun. But I'll usually just put a little bit on there. Okay, again, it's just a point of friction and it's good to do. And then, of course, look over your whole gun. If you see any kind of discoloration or anything, you can put a little gun cleaner on it. Again, you just don't want to get really anything inside your striker, uh, your striker fire system. But now that we have that sitting, just gonna move on to the frame. Okay, again, uh, blowback gases and that excess powder that's not burn up will come back into inside the frame. So just go over some of your metal parts. Okay, the the frame grooves for your slide. You can address those. Your sear. Your trigger bar. Really, any kind of metal part. With the polymer guns, it's you know pretty easy to clean. If there's no metal inside the magwell or anything, you just usually take like an air canister and spray it all out. Um, that's something else that you'd uh, potentially want to get. Just go to a computer store, get yourself one of those air cans, and those work great for at least clearing out anything in your gun. But now that we have it all coated, I just wanted to let that sit there and again you want this cleaner to sit for a good five to ten minutes um, I'm not gonna take that long again I just want again the purpose of this video is to show you how and what's best to do but I want to address this a lot of people forget to clean their magazines okay there's holes in this okay basically this is where the rounds get feed into fed into the bore part of the of the barrel and of course gases and excess powder will fly into here and start gunking up your magazine. So it is important to remember to, I mean, of course, not every single time you go to the range or you go shooting, but every once in a while, you do want to start cleaning your magazine. Every time you go out to the range,
but you definitely need to try and clean it every once in a while. Okay, these uh, Glock mags are can be a little difficult to get apart. What I suggest is taking a screwdriver, okay? And there's a little lip here in the in the magazine because they do have these little lock lock pins on the side. But if you take a screwdriver, start bending it out, and then you want to depress this pin. Okay, once you depress that, and start sliding that base plate off of there. Okay, of course, I just wanted to show you how to do it um, for the sake of this video, but just make sure that you address your magazine. And if you want to see a video of actually how it takes down, um, we'll put a video uh, up to show you guys exactly how to do that. But now that the cleaning solution has been sitting in our gun, uh, we want to start wiping it down. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go with what I started with, which is the barrel. And of course I have my 9mm brush, and I just need to give this a couple of swab outs. Okay, again, to get inside all the rifling, because that solution's been sitting in there and breaking down all that powder fouling. Now, if you don't clean your gun very often and you go shooting frequently, you're going to have to repeat these steps. Just remember that these are the steps you have to go through, and of course, Always, each time that you're done with one step, check, look down the barrel, put a light down there, see if there's any kind of deposits, and just repeat the steps. But just like before, I'm going to take my cleaning swab and wrap my brush in it. I'm going to go in through the bore end of the gun, my back end of the barrel, and I'm just going to give this a quick little swab out. And as you can see, that's all stuff that's going to be gunking up your, your barrel. But now that that's done, just want to wipe down my bore. I had some cleaning solution on here too. And then once that's done, you can set that off to the side. So easiest things when it comes to cleaning off your slide, um, what I'll do first is I'll go through it with just like a patch or a cloth and just start lifting off the at least the main, uh, well, where a lot of the gun's cleaning solution was sitting, especially underneath the bolt face. Okay, it's just a flat surfaced area that I could wipe off. All right, and as you can see, it's a good thing we started cleaning this gun. But I'll use that, and then for all like the little nooks and crannies, all in the slide grooves. I'll use Q-tips. Now these are gun cleaning Q-tips. You can get these at a lot of gun cleaning store, or gun stores in general. But you can also go to the store and just get uh, regular Q-tips. Okay, they work just fine. But it just helps you get, you know, just in those little creases, and it just makes it a little bit easier. And as you see, I'm just addressing each place that I put some of that gun cleaner. Even the bolt face towards where the extractor is. And again, just use your best judgment. Okay, you know where where the explosion happens. Just try to make sure that you lift up any of that excess powder. As you can see, there's quite a bit in there. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing with the frame. Okay, I'm just gonna take you know a cleaning swab, wipe down what I can. Okay, again, address all the places, all the metal parts inside of your gun. See, like I said, that those that gas blowback, it goes everywhere. So it is important to make sure that you just try and clean your gun the best you can. So again, I'm using one of my little Q-tips. I'm just getting down where I, my finger can't reach. And I think that should be good. 
Now, just like I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this video, it's good not to use any kind of oil. Now, if you're someone that says, well, my gun is bone dry and I need some, well, just use a little bit. And I'm not saying that guns don't need a little bit of lubricity, but it is important to use a, a very minuscule amount. So what I use a lot of times when I'm lubricating my firearm is Ballastol. It's a good multi-purpose lubricant and I'm, I've just been using it for years and it's what I just go to. Uh, but just to show you the extent of how much you should use, that little spray right there, just one. That's all you'll need for the whole entire firearm, okay? Now, I'm going to address places, yeah, like my slide grooves, okay, it's a place where friction happens. Okay, even so, where the barrel meets the slide, all right, right up here, that's a place where there's a lot of friction. And literally, that's all you need to do. Again, sometimes I'll wipe down my barrel a little bit just so it has a little bit of a coating just to protect it. Again, it is, you know, stainless steel, but, you know, steel will wear out over time. And literally, that's all the oil that you'll need to do. Um, of course, you don't have to do it every time. Something else you might want to clean is your recoil spring. Okay, this, again, I'll use just a nylon brush. And I'll just go over it, make sure that there's no like heavy deposits on it. And of course, I'll wipe it off. I had some gun cleaner on that brush, so of course I want to wipe it all off. Now, also uh, when it comes to gun cleaners, be careful. I mean, there's some of them that are like ammonia based, I believe. And of course, you don't want that sitting in your gun, and you don't want, really want this cleaner sitting in your gun either. So just make sure that anytime you use the cleaner to wipe it off. But overall, that's your gun clean and ready. Now what we need to do is just go in reverse order and put this gun back together. So I'm going to take my barrel with my lugs up top, insert it at an angle, and then drop it down and push it back so that it seats all the way back against that bolt face. Then take your recoil spring, okay, the larger end goes towards the muzzle of the barrel, and then of course this flat circle end, which is a little bit smaller, goes against the barrel. Now this barrel does have a little half moon or quarter moon notch in it, if you can see, but that little plate is going to go right there, and it's going to seat perfectly, okay, so you don't really have to worry about it. Um, going off to the side or anything like that. So just make sure you put it in somewhat straight and then just push down and let it seat down in there. And that's all you have to do. Then, this is why Gaston Glock and that, uh, did very well with these firearms because they're you know very easy just to take apart and just as easy to put back together. So find your, sli your slide grooves, put your slide on, Rack it back, and you're good to go. But that's how you clean the Glock 26 and Glock 27. All right, now we're going to go over some additional details for the Glock 26 and the 27. Although I have the Glock 26 here, the 27, like I mentioned before, is pretty much identical, except for the, the rounds they're chambered in are different. In the 26, you've got 9mm, and the 27 is 40 caliber. So we're going to start up top here with the sights. Now, these firearms came with your standard Glock bucket and ball sights. However, you can buy aftermarket sights if you would like, whether those are a three dot, night sight, ghost string, whatever you prefer, you can change those out pretty easily here on the Glock. Now the slide and the barrel are both made from stainless steel. And on the slide here, you've got the matte finish to help reduce any kind of glare that you might have off the slide. And you can see the front of the slide here has been smoothed out and dehorned so that it doesn't get caught up on your holster or your garment, anything like that. Here you have your extractor for spent casings, and that also serves as a loaded chamber indicator. So for states that require that on a, a concealed carry firearm, you have that feature here. Now moving down into the frame, it's your standard Glock polymer frame, what they're known for. Makes it lightweight, and for me, it's extremely ergonomic. Some people don't like it, but I actually like the Glock um, ergonomics and aesthetics here for the frame. 
the side panels on the grip aren't very textured. They're not very aggressive there, but you have some texturing here along the back strap, and you've actually got some texturing here on the front of the trigger guard. Now, you can always buy aftermarket grip tape or do some stippling on the firearm to increase the texturing, whatever your choice is there. The trigger guard is large enough to accommodate a gloved finger in there, which is great for those of you who may be carrying this firearm in colder climates where you might be wearing a glove. Um, then the trigger itself has the only external safety on the firearm, trigger safety there, which prevents the trigger from being pulled back unless that safety is depressed. So that's the uh, trigger pull. And here's the reset. It's felt and it's auditory, so you do feel it in the trigger, and there's not a lot of travel there in between the reset. You've got the finger grooves here on the frame as well, which are nice. Um, and because it's a double stack firearm, you actually can get a pretty good grip on it despite its subcompact size. For me, I have medium sized hands, and uh, I get a pretty good purchase on the firearm, and I think it'll work too for people even with smaller hands. Now, moving over to the other side of the firearm here, you've got, of course, your standard Glock takedown lever here. And then the other external features that you would have on here, these mechanisms, you've got the slide catch and release, which is a little bit in the frame here to help reduce it getting caught on any clothing or your holster. And then of course you've got your rectangular magazine release here. Moving down into the magazine. So for the Glock 26, you have obviously, like I said before, nine millimeter, and that can hold 10 rounds in this double stack magazine, plus one in the chamber, giving you 11 rounds overall. And it's your standard polymer Glock magazine. For the 27, you've got nine rounds plus one in the chamber for 10 total in the 40 caliber. That concludes our review and cleaning of the Glock 26 and 27. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something from it. And if you have a friend who would enjoy this video, share it with them on social media. If you'd like to see more information on firearms care and cleaning, concealed carry best practices, and how to utilize the full line of urban carry products, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also just search Urban Carry Holsters to find more content from us at any time. That's it for today, and until next time, keep calm and return fire.